Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Iti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesa Sanjavadi Pasthyatya Desatarine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabho Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Sorry to be late, I ran into a crisis on the way over here and it was took a little while. It wasn't anticipated. I was on time, but the crisis prevailed. Two little reports from a previous verse. Maybe you remember text number 20 from Canto 11, chapter 10, text number 20. I think it's 20. Text 29, sorry about that. 11, 10, 29. The verse speaks about living entities who reside in hell have material bodies. Here's the translation, BBT. Worshipping ghosts and spirits, the bewildered person falls fully into the grip of unauthorized activities and thus goes to hell where he receives a material body infected by the darkest modes of nature. So I brought up the point that I was always under the impression that in the hellish planets there's no material body. It's just a subtle body and the suffering is going on on the subtle platform in a subtle body because there's no material bodies. I was under that impression. But it says specifically where he receives a material body infected by the darkest modes of nature. So I said I would do a little research and it took a while. And here I'm happy to report to you the results of that research. Just as this uh, chapter 10 of Canto 11 is describing fruitive activities, the nature of fruitive activity, there's two other places where a whole chapter is dedicated to adverse fruitive activities. One of those is in Jud Bharat's discussion with Ruhugana. In fact, there's two chapters about it, very detailed, very kind of spooky, frightening. And another is in the discussions between Kapila Dev and Devahuti, and that is chapter 30 of Canto 3. So in chapter 30 of Canto 3, there are two verses that specifically say the same thing as Krishna is saying, or as the translation reads. So here's 335. The conditioned living entity is satisfied in his own particular species of life. Semicolon. This is Prabhupada's translation, Canto 3, Chapter 30, Text 5. Semicolon. When diluted by the covering influence of the illusory energy, he feels little inclined to cast off his body even when in hell for he takes delight in hellish enjoyment quote unquote 
And uh, one of the persons I consulted was Rida Nandamarsh because he was responsible for the translation of this 11th canto with assistance certainly from Gopi. So he says, there's the literal translation of that canto three, chapter 30, text five. Narakas to, even situated in hell, a person does not want to give up the body. Bewildered by God's maya, he is satisfied even being in hell. So that's 335 and 33020 has this other term yata yatana deha yatana deha yatana means tormentable deha body yatana deha is in the, the, the BBT translation lends one to, it sounds like that it's in a subtle body, but that's not, that the, here's, here's. The way it is translated in English in the BBT publication, it may appear to the reader as if the jiva in hell has only a subtle body. Now I don't have the translation of, you can look it up later, 3, 30, 20. Doesn't mention specifically a, a body, just says he suffers. However, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur and other acharyas clearly identify ya tana deha, that's a tormentable body, as a body different from the subtle body. Here's what Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur writes in his commentary, same verse. Pulling him out of his gross body and putting him in a body suitable for punishment, yatana, they take him away. So the Yamadutas take the subtle body from the gross body. Step two, they put him into a body suitable for punishment. And step three, they take him away. So it doesn't say chronologically when, it just says, I mean, you know, in sequence. And here's another of the acharyas commenting on this very same verse, who writes, even if cut apart or burnt, these bodies restore themselves so that the torture can continue. Right? It's a, it's a covering, it's not the subtle body, it's a covering of the subtle body that has a very unique nature. And there's many things unique about it. You know, they lop off limbs and then the limbs re re restore. And there's no mother and father. There's no mention of mother and father. It's just the Yamadutas, when they take the subtle body from the gross body, they put him in a suitable body for punishment. That's Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's commentary. So that's text 29. We're, we're a little bit beyond that, but I, I wanted to report. I learned something from this little exercise. Asking questions helps to get answers. And then you have to go to people that are authoritative that have the answers. There's a unique kind of body for the denizens of hell. It's not provided by mother and father, which is the usual procedure, but the Yamadutas have that power and they award the living entity a ya tana deha to cover the subtle body. Anyway, that's a detail. And Uttam Bhakta is not here this morning, but I misquoted now here's the correct quote. The three, Canto 3, Chapter 9, Text 11. Those who like to look these things up, 
3, 9, 11. It's a, a verse that's spoken by, uh, to the, the personality of Godhead. O oh my Lord, your devotees can see you through the ears by the process of bona fide hearing, and thus their hearts become cleansed, and you take your seat there. You are so merciful to your devotees that you, are manifest, that you manifest yourself in the particular eternal form of transcendence in which they always think of you. Though the, the, the reference, there was some discussion about which forms, and it, it, which forms the Lord shows depends upon the bhakti of the worshiper. He shows forms according to the bhakti of the worshiper. And there's many examples of, of that. There were a couple of examples that came up recently. One of them, <clears throat> one of them was that Prahlad in his Prahlad's description of Prahlad before this encounter with Hiranyakashipu threatening him and so on, there in the beginning section it says that Prahlad had, there's three verses, Krishna's name is mentioned specifically. He had unalloyed devotion for Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. And yet the form that was shown to him was Lord Shingadev, who was in a, a manifestation, an avatar of Krishna, or an avatar of the source. There's other examples without going to the other examples. The Lord shows a form corresponding to their devotion. Here's another one. When, when Krishna liberated the 20,800 kings that were in Jarasandha's prison, Krishna came before them in four arms. And the description of the position of the symbols of Vishnu in those four arms, our Acharya's comment, this is a specific aspect of the 24 features of Vishnu according to the position of the symbols of Vishnu in his hands. And this particular description of what the, um, the, the kings saw was the form of Janardana. And Janardana, according to Chaitanya Charitamrita, is one of two forms that are expansions of Krishna for pastimes, Vasudev Krishna in, for pastimes. Those are details. But the, the, the principle is, and I hope Uttam Bhakta is listening, 3, 9, 11, Krishna shows that form according to their meditation and their worship. What's in their mind, he shows that form. Okay, so now we're moving on. Nice to see brahmacharis here. And the verse for this morning is which the verse number? Who knows? 34? 34? Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Oh, there's the Sanskrit on the screen. Kala Atma Gamo Loka Swabhavo Dharma Evacha Etimam Bahuda Prahur Gunavyati Kare Sati
Kal Atma Gano Subhavo Dharma Evacha Itima Bahada Prahur Guna Vyati Kare Sati Kala Atma Gano Loka Swabhavo Dharma Evacha Itima Bahada Prahur Guna Vyati Kare Sati Kal Atma Gano Time, Atma, the Self, Agamaha, Vedic Knowledge, Lokaha, the Universe, Swabhavaha, different natures of different living entities, Dharmaha, religious principles, Eva, certainly, Cha, also, Iti, thus, Mam, me, Bahudha, in many ways. Prahu, they call. Guna, of the modes of nature. Vyatikare, agitation. Sati, when there is. Translation, when there is agitation and interaction of the material modes of nature, the living entities, then describe me in various ways such as all-powerful time, the self with a capital S, Vedic knowledge, the universe, one's own nature, religious ceremonies, and so on. Purport. One can experience the potency of the personality of Godhead by observing how different species of life, demigods, human beings, animals, Birds, fish, birds, insects, plants, etc., gradually evolve their natures and activities. Each species of life executes a particular process of sense gratification, and this function is called the Dharma of the species. Lacking knowledge of the personality of Godhead, ordinary persons catch a glimpse of the Lord's potencies in the above mentioned manifestations. Srila Madhvacharya has cited the following information from the Tantra Bhagavata. The Lord is called Kala or time because he is the mover and controller of all material qualities. Because he is complete and perfect, he is called Atma or the self. And he is the personification of all knowledge. The word Swabhava <coughs> indicates that the Lord fully controls his own destiny, semicolon, and as the maintainer of every one, he is called dharma. One on the liberated platform can achieve unlimited bliss by worshiping the personality of Godhead, whereas those who are ignorant of the Lord try to find meaning by concocting other objects of worship. If one stubbornly imagines that anything is independent of the Lord, one will remain in the grip of the illusory network of the Lord's potency, seeing the inevitability of the destruction of material things. One is constantly fearful 
and perpetually laments in the darkness of ignorance. In such darkness, there's no question of happiness. Therefore, we should never think that anything is independent of the personality of Godhead. As soon as one considers anything to be independent of the Lord, one is immediately gripped by the Lord's illusory network called Maya. One should always remain humble and obedient to the personality of Godhead, even when one is liberated, and thus one will achieve the supreme spiritual happiness. Well, the purport is addressing something that's a little different than what the verses seems to be addressing. <coughs> the verse seems to be addressing different ways in which the source of everything or the supreme is conceived of. And according to one's position, it starts like that, that the different living entities are, are awarded by material nature with specific capacities and natures, and they act according to those natures because they have that particular body. And then there's something specific about their capacities that are, one could say, vibhutis, or opulences of the Supreme within this world. You know, the, uh, um, a dog can smell things that we can't smell, and so forth and so on. There's capacities that species of life have that other species don't have. And that's a manifestation one can uh, acknowledge that there's a manifestation of the potency of the Supreme within this world. So one can have realization of the Supreme variously and then up to the human form of life where the full realization becomes possible. Then of course our even realization of the, the absolute truth in different features is the appeal or the, the, the mandate for the human form of life, to come to that stage, realizing the source of everything in different features and ultimately the Bhagavan feature and so on. It seems to be what the verse is speaking about. And uh, the, the purport is focusing slightly differently on um, the terms that are within the verse like Atma from Madhvacharya, Atma, because that's the Supreme Self. So Atma, Atma can have different meanings depending upon context that we already know. Atma commonly means the soul, but Atma can mean the body, or the mind, or the soul. And atma can mean, in this case, the supreme soul, or the, the supreme self. And kala, kala is a shakti, and kala is the supreme lord, the possessor of that shakti. Kala Shakti and Kala, Kala, because he is the mover and controller of material qualities. No, the mover and controller of material qualities doesn't have his hands on the steering wheel. He does so through his potencies. Krishna is the doer and the non the non doer at the same time. That's double talk, right? He's the doer and he's the non doer. Well, make up your mind. Well, he's both. He's the, he's the doer through the agency of his potencies, but personally he doesn't do it because his potencies do it for him. His function is he just desires, and his potencies know what he desires because they're intimately connected to him. They're his potencies, and off they go, taking care of his desires. Swabhavaki jnana balakriyacha. 
Prabhupada quoted that verse. Or icha, simply desiring, and the potencies are moving according to his icha, his desire. So there's something he's desiring. But he's not, he, he, when we desire something, we have to do something. When Krishna desires something, he doesn't have to do something. So he's the doer and the non-doer. The doer in the sense that his potencies are doing, which are non-different than him, and doer in the sense that he's the initial cause behind all other effects that be, then become causes and so forth. And this way we have different philosophies. <laughs> like, just a sh little sharing. There's not a lot about Buddha's teachings. When you read our scriptures from, you know, it's particularly comments by Acharyas and, and verses in the Bhagavatam, there's not a lot about other than the, the purpose of Buddha's appearance. He, you know, the nonviolence. So he did the nonviolence program throughout the Vedas because there's sacrifice of animals and just, follow, just be, be nonviolent. So we hear a lot about that. But th there's, there's a lot more than that, and there's not a lot written about there more than that. So um, I, I was particularly looking at Radhakrishna here because of visiting China, you know, it's a, it's a big deal for the people in China. Like Krishna, Buddha, what's the compare? There's not a lot of information. But I came across just yesterday, doing some research, there's um, in Vedanta Sutra what's Vedanta Sutra? it's a compilation it's not just taking the Vedas and dividing the Vedas into four which Vyas did he's summarizing it's his work Vedanta Sutra is his work and it's putting in little sutra forms what the Vedas say and thus, traditional lines of authority have to have a commentary on Vedanta Sutra. Like, what's your, what your group say about Vedanta Sutra? It's like, very important. Shri Shri Radha Nila Madhava Ki Jai. So fast forward, you might, I was surprised, but then not so surprised after thinking about it. There's a long section in Vedanta Sutra about Buddhism. It doesn't use Buddhism by name. It's speaking of Buddhism in principle. Now how did, chrono chronologically, how did Veda Vyas know about Buddhism before it happened because he was present before Buddha came. Well, there's two answers. He's Tri Kalagya. And there's another answer. There's nothing new. <laughs> there's eternal truth. And it's some, like Prabhupada says, any, any, any philosophy is just rehashing of the Vedas. Any philosophy. No, if you want to get really philosophical, um, I'm planning to, you know, cut and paste Banu Swami's translation of Valadev Vidyabhusan's commentary on that section of Vedanta Sutra that deals with Buddha's teachings. And gosh, it's really elaborate. It's not just one verse. It's a whole series of verses where understanding Vedanta Sutra, from what the Vedanta Sutra means, how to extend it into the world in which we live because it's the foundation, it's the sutras of stuff that happens here. 
philosophies, etc. It's really complex. Really complex. So if you want your head to spin, I'll share it and you can let your head spin. Very complex. But it, it, it's connected to the reason bringing this up, it's connected to this. There are different conceptions of the absolute truth and it's nothing new. It's as old as eternity. And the Vedas present Aparusheya Shabda Praman and it's summarized in Vedanta Sutra and there are different ideas. And gosh, it's complex, the different ideas. So people that don't have disciplic succession and try to discern reality without disciplic succession, gosh, how complicated. And then <clears throat> behind <clears throat> each of the perspectives, there's a reason or a logic, tarka. And they present, this is the truth. That's one of the things that I learned from reading this section, is one of the arguments, one of the fundamental arguments of Buddhism is void cannot be disproved because it's fundamental. You can't disprove it. You can't reject it because it's fundamental. And it can't be understood because it's, you know, it's, impersonalism does similar shell games. But, you know, Vyasadeva knew about it and he, he indicates the falsity of those doctrines because, you know, th th there's not only one Buddhism, Prabhu's, there's branches of Buddhism and there's sub branches of those branches and there's sub branches of the sub branches and, and they all have some logic. Why this instead of that? And that's what this verse is saying. There are different persons. Krishna is saying, there are different persons have different conceptions of me. It's like, you know, the, the blind man giving a description of an elephant. You know that one. One's touching the tail, one's touching the ear, one's touching the trunk, one's touching the leg, one's touching the belly. And this is an elephant. So they may have some slice of something and call it an elephant. So the, 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 the realization of Krishna is dependent upon the heart and the mind of the viewer. And so they become convinced over here and convinced over there and the ones that are over there don't accept the ones that are over here and they, they have a clash and they debate and argue and it's endless and sometimes they more than debate sometimes they fight sometimes they do different things what to do? well the simple thing is Bhagavad Gita and that, that knowledge is descending knowledge and one has to connect with descending knowledge. And you don't connect with descending knowledge and you're going to come up with a piece of reality rather than the full picture. So each of these that are listed in verse 34, when there's agitation and interaction of the material modes of nature, the living entities describe me in various ways, such as. Now, embedded within the verse is these are products of the modes of nature. And the modes of nature influence everything within the material atmosphere, including the mind. And then the mind carries conceptions and there's these list of conceptions. Now, some of them are a little closer than others to you know, transcendence. All powerful time, the self, Vedic knowledge, the universe, one's own nature, religious ceremonies, and so on. So what are we supposed to do with, with this information? Well, on the one hand and on the other hand, on the, other, on the one hand, we respect 
they have some attraction and they have um, based upon the action and interaction of the modes of nature they have a conception and we don't like one of the one of the recommendations it's right in Bhagavad Gita but one of the recommendations is searching for truth Vada is called instead of searching for defeating another person Vitandi so we're not interested in like smashing people we're interested in truth and we're interested in appreciating somebody has a different understanding than we have and we stick by the truth and how do we know it's true the simplic succession very simple very simple very simple so what's the simplic succession that's an important item to discern because some people may say this is it this is the simplic succession and over there they say this is no wait a minute this is ours is the simplic succession it differs from yours because look at this conclusion that conclusion they, they look like they're different anyway it gets a little complicated so one has to find the simplic succession and I'm you know looking at our founder Acharya take the time and trouble I've done it are the teachings that Srila Prabhupada has given us consistent with the simplic succession language is different because time place circumstance is different is the presentation consistent just in terms of using your intelligence discerning capacity to tell what's what and is what Prabhupada is giving us in his Bhaktivedanta purports consistent with the predecessor Acharyas I started late because of that emergency I ran into on the way over here but I want to end so we have some time for some questions so I'll just um, share one thing one thing before <coughs> a very rapidly growing faith in America and the world I imagine is the Mormon faith and one of the methods that they use for propagating the Mormon faith is they have young people between this age that age do witnessing Jehovah's Witnessing they, for two years they dedicate themselves to going here and there and sharing their message and those who do that because there's abundance of wealth with the Jehovah's Witnesses religion for various reasons and structures their college education is taken care of no worries so it's 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 popular and it's effective the, uh, in our farm community in Pennsylvania Gita Nagari there's a, an elder in the Jehovah's Witnesses faith and every year some of the young people that are on that witnessing program they come and spend time with him and one of the things that he does is he brings them to the farm to learn about you know and appreciate their faith and what, what you know so they're, they're world, they have some worldly experience but it's you know he, you know the elder is helping to nourish their faith and their teachings and their paradigm. So one year, um, uh, you know every year it happens. At least it was happening. Some probably is still happening. Uh, a whole group came to the to the farm. It was right after we had a, a week long event. And I was just mixing with some of them. And I asked innocently, um, oh, said, you're aware of how Joseph Smith received his teachings, right? He said, yeah. He said, I, 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 when I was young, I lived in upstate New York, and I went to Palmyra, which is where Joseph Smith went up a mountain 
and we got teachings from God and came back down the mountain and shared these teachings and that's your teachings. Jehovah's Witnesses from Joseph Smith. God spoke to him. He said, wow, what was it like? And so there was some bonding. And then I said, Let, how do you know that the teachings you're getting are the same as the teaching Joseph Smith got from God? And they were like, what? He said, well, we get it from our elders in Salt Lake. They have, you know, they have confidence and trust. Their elders are representing transparently what Joseph Smith said some long ago. And he said, we, we all know what happens in course of time. Things get a little distorted. So I'm not challenging you. I'm encouraging you. I've done this in my tradition. You go study the teachings of the previous elders in the Mormon faith. Try to get as accurate of the picture of the original teaching that Joseph Smith delivered to people and see if it's consistent or has it morphed over time. So I'm inviting Prabhu's. We read Prabhupada's books in the course of time after becoming sufficiently engrossed and embedded and internalized in Prabhupada's teachings, his Bhaktivedanta purports, you will want to anyways, you start to read other, just like this little reference about in the hellish planets, is there only a subtle body or is there a some kind of a body in addition to the subtle body. Now it's there in the verses, but you read the, the translation of um, 3.10, no, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 3.30, 